All right, everybody. Uh, welcome to Thursday Gathering 142 to uh, Kyoto Innovation Night. We will be here tonight in this room to talk about how to start a business here in the old capital of uh, Kyoto, Japan. Um, with that said, I have a couple of things to announce before we get started. The first thing being, um, we'll be hosting this session and then also Directly after, we will be also having a networking, um, virtual networking space open for everyone to come by and dis, uh, discuss what you've heard or share ideas, et cetera, et cetera. So please stay tuned for that and feel free to join us there. Uh, we have also provided um, an opportunity for everyone to listen to this in Japanese as well. えっと、通訳も入っていますので、そちらこちらのセッション、英語となりますが、通訳の方で、えっと、日本語で聞けることも可能です。そちらがですね、このようになっております。えっと、少々お待ちくださいね。So the, I've sent the information on this chat if you would like to use that to kind of uh, go through the translation functions as well. Uh, or you can look at the screen and look at it that way as well. Um, and then also you are here too. If you're going to be watching this uh, session, feel free to use the gallery view or the speaker view uh, to uh, watch the, uh, the show as you please. And then also, while uh, our speakers are speaking, please feel free to, uh, to mute your mic so that we don't uh, get our speakers uh, to get confused or anything like that. Uh, so please mute your mics when you're doing so. And then finally speaking, please use the chat function uh, below if you're on a desktop or a laptop to uh, ask any questions or put down any comments. If you are here uh, via a tablet or a cell phone, I believe the chat function is on your top right side. So feel free to open that to use uh, the chat function to speak to everybody. Uh, and with that said, I would like to pass on the mic to Joseph uh, if he is here already to get started um, with this session. While that is happening, uh, does anyone have any questions? If you do, please feel free to ask me via the chat. Taksan, sorry yes. for interruption. Uh, could you assign Fujiara-san to the translator of Japanese? Yes, give me one second. I will do so right now. Thank you. Yes. Is Kyoda san here yet? Does anyone have any questions while we are waiting for our speakers to arrive? Please feel free to use the chat function and let me know. One second. Let me go grab our speakers as they are not here yet. Uh, we'll be right back. Please, everyone, stay tuned. I will be right back to bring our speakers on board. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here are our speakers. Um, Kyoda-san, I have explained to them the flow of the evening and this session. 
Uh, so please feel free to take it away and we will see you at the end of this session. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Taksan. So thank you for everyone to join Room C for a uh, session about start your new business at Old Capital in Kyoto, Japan. So today, uh, just we'd like to share uh, about the uh, Startup Capital Kyoto, I mean, uh, startup visa system, support system, and uh, another audience can share the, uh, I mean, participant can share the uh, story, uh, like who got a, yeah, how to get a startup visa or something. So please enjoy the session. Okay, so just to, I'd like to introduce the, uh, what is the speakers, just quickly. So I'm, I'm gonna present about Startup Visa at Shrine. So I'm a conscious of Startup Visa. Uh, my name is Joseph Kyoda, very nice to meet you. And speaker is uh, uh, first, Wonsan, could you introduce just quickly? Hi, uh, I'm, uh, I'm on Ling, actually I'm the CEO. I'm the CEO of- I'm the CEO of- and uh, basically, uh, I moved to Kyoto two years ago, and I started this company recently with Jetro to provide um, uh, collaborative design and lifestyle consultancy uh, to Singapore market uh, and uh, design community in Asia. To get working together with the Kyoto uh, craftsmen or uh, Kyoto designers, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Okay, so how about Wong Sam? Hi, uh, nice to meet you. My name is Yuan, and uh, I'm the CEO of uh, Fangfo, and uh, we offer mobile order system. And I will give you introduction later. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, farida -san. Hello, my name is Farid Benamore, and I'm the founder and CEO of Zorbi, which is an augmented reality and virtual reality video game simulation. And I'll, I look forward to explaining more about it later. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So let me start a uh, presentation of the startup video. So thank you for introduction. Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay. So hi everyone. Uh, again, my name is Joseph Kyoda. I work for Jetoro Kyoto and I am concierge for Startup Visa. So today I will introduce about unique ecosystem in Kyoto and Startup Visa, uh, which is totally new system and uh, it's a really benefits for Obasi entrepreneurs. And let me quickly introduce about myself. Uh, I am half Japanese and American, and I was working at Silicon Valley for six years and just came back to Japan two years ago. And my background is mainly IoT hardware and AI, and I am helping abroad startups to start business in Japan. And also I have passion to help people from Obasi because I was falling no, when I lived in the US. Yeah. So how many people have been heard about uh, Startup Visa? Are you familiar with Jetro? Uh, Jetro is a Japanese government agency to support international business. We support overseas companies establishing a business in Japan. And also we are helping Japanese companies entering into overseas market. And essentially, we are trying to support innovation, such as supporting Japanese startups going abroad or overseas startups coming to Japan in its market. And in Kyoto, we are supporting overseas entrepreneurs to start their business in Kyoto, including getting startup visa from last April. And I will explain startup visa program. So Star Visa will play a key role to build attractive ecosystem in Kyoto. Let me explain what the ecosystem in Kyoto meaning. 
Uh, they have several unique points. As you can see on the slide, especially Kyoto has a great spirit to pursue their own ideas and researches. Kyoto offers a truly extensive range of studies from cutting edge research that have been awarded Nobel prizes to animation and Zen studies. There are about 50 universities. Uh, one out of 10 people in the Kyoto city area is actually a university student. By far the highest in Japan in terms of the population of studies in its population. There are also about 9,000 students from all over the world who are studying in Kyoto. These figures just prove how Kyoto is the ideal place for the innovation. As you can see, University offer various startup incubation programs. And Kyoto is a city where loading Japanese high-tech companies gather while boasting a history of more, more than one year. Uh, I mean, more, more than thousand years. The headquarter of world famous companies such as Nintendo, Kyocera, and Nidec are located in Kyoto. Those are world leading industries such as electronics, semiconductor, gaming, healthcare devices, some of the startups in the past and grow up the global players in cutting edge and most updated industries. Like for example, Nintendo, of course you may know, they used to make up a traditional Japanese card game and they really struggled to create the new entertainment, but they are famous now because they create computer games. And it was a great opportunity for startups to collaborate with these companies. As you can see in the slides, we have a various ecosystem program in Kyoto as well, and it is very developing. You may know Prague and Play, which originally from Silicon Valley. They chose Kyoto City to establish their second location in Japan because they recognize the how Kyoto is attractive for foreign entrepreneurs, such as not only I already featured. For example, Kyoto has over a thousand year history as capital of Japan, which helped entrepreneurs inspiration and providing safe and convenient lifestyle and abundant nature. Japan is one of the safest country in the world, as you know. And this is the difference. Kyoto already had the acceleration programs recognized globally, such as k Hamas, k Plus, or Healthcare Venture Conference Kyoto. But if you see our region in larger scale, we have further programs and all of these programs promote the regional empowerment for open innovation. So as I explained, Kyoto developing their own unique ecosystem. We must include and connect overseas players in here to make better cycle. And multiple cities are already started. So why not start in Kyoto? Because we're going to use this opportunity. The startup visa program actually started from several regions, such as Fukuoka and Tokyo, and the structural reform project in Japan five, six years ago. And now startup visa program is implemented by METI, that's Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry. So it started December, 2018, and it, to introduce the program, each prefecture must apply to METI, and then this each prefecture, local authority needs to manage this program. So Kyoto this started this program from uh, April last year. And here the major issue when overseas people consider starting a business in Japan. Previously, you had to apply to management visa to study a business, which means either you invest 5 million yen or you have to hire at least two people. That was the condition to get visa for studying a business before. It was too high a hurdle. That's why the startup visa was introduced by Japan. And other value is also considerable, but Jetro can support something here. I will explain about this later. And here they are trying about startup visa supporting program. Uh, this is system you can use startup visa maximum for one year, and you have to renew the visa each six months. Then you can stay maximum one year with uh, your investment. So you have to get approval from each prefecture. In case of Kyoto, you have to get approval from Kyoto. 
But once you can get approval with your business plan from Kyoto, uh, you can get started visa. And you can start in stay in Japan for one year for develop, just focus to develop your business. And this is a target. The target is all non-Japanese who must get visa to stay in Japan and who has motivated to do startup business in Japan. We want more and more entrepreneurs who want to start business in Kyoto. And we have target industry which focusing what Kyoto prefecture strength and future plan. So we covered uh, almost a, a, a lot of industries as well. And so here's what you need to prepare. Uh, this is really outline. Like for example, uh, business plan that should include uh, your financial plan or expected expected profit. And you can follow all details with our, pre our application. And that kind of information would be necessary anyway if you're planning to start your own business. And you can down you can download the old document from this website. I will share this later. And of course, we have a subsidy and support program. So we cover the uh, office rent fee or company registration fee. Also, you can use uh, co-working space as free. Also, we have a professional consultation. We can connect to you like lawyers or tax accountant or immigration specialist. Uh, that's all free. And also, we will introduce, I mean, connect to the ecosystem players, like each of you, like we can introduce you to the investors, or banks, incubator, like these players. And I would like to introduce some of startups happened in Kyoto by overseas people. Uh, Notion is worldwide software service. Actually, they are US-based startup and now become unicorn. But they have a famous story which shared on their website that they developed their product in Kyoto at their early stage while staying at Kyoto for almost a year. And they really love Kyoto. There are more and more startups started by overseas entrepreneurs in Kyoto now. And we expect more innovation to happen in Kyoto like this with lower startup hurdles by providing this startup visa. Startup visa is a totally new system, so we would like to let overseas people know about this. We want them to use it more. And please spread out this information to your community if you could. So thank you for your time. Then from now, uh, we, today we have three speakers who already got a startup visa. So uh, just to, they can share about what they're uh, focusing now and what their vision is uh, what in Japan. So Farid-san, could you share about your vision? Sure. <clears throat> Thanks so much, uh, Joseph Sun. Uh, so, as I mentioned, my name is Farid Benamor. Um, I'm not currently in Kyoto, but I am very fortunate to be a new recipient of a startup visa, and I will be moving to Kyoto uh, in early April uh, from Geneva, Switzerland, uh, where I am now. Um, I'm originally American from Los Angeles. Uh, and um, what I'll do is I'll tell you a little bit about first my own background, then my startup Zorbi, and then I'll tell you about my experience with uh, going through the startup visa application process. So my own personal background, um, I uh, come from the entertainment industry, so movies, television, and some video games, and uh, mainly doing uh, movie acquisitions and distribution in international markets in places like Japan. And it was that early exposure to Japan that made me really think that this would be a really interesting place to start a business. I also had the uh, good fortune to uh, had made another startup before uh, in the US called uh, Pluto TV, which was a free video streaming service. Um, and uh, we, uh, my, my business partners and I sold that uh, in 2019 to Viacom. And ever since then, I've been really 
interested in uh, uh, building my next successful startup. And that's what this uh, Zorbi is. So um, this is what led me to uh, apply for the startup visa in Kyoto as well. Let me share my screen right now and tell you a little bit more about my startup before I tell you about the, the visa process. Cool, thanks. Thank you. So hopefully my screen can be seen now. Um, so Zorbi, in a few words, we're an augmented reality and virtual reality multiplayer mirror world sandbox and social destination. So I know that's a lot of words, so it's best to sometimes compare it to something else. I'm sure many of you have seen the movie The Matrix or Ready Player One, or perhaps you've read the book Snow Crash and followed the protagonist uh, Hiro, uh, with a Japanese name, of course. Um, these all take place in a mirror world or a metaverse type of environment. And this is what we're trying to take a first step toward building. Uh, basically, either using your smartphone like this and pointing at the surroundings around you or using a virtual reality headset, which you put on, on your head, you can access this mirror world and, and basically using uh, visual imagery of earth, we've recreated earth so that you can go anywhere you want on earth um, and recreate cityscapes the way you like. So for example, even though I'm in Geneva right now and many of you are in Kyoto, um, we could be having this conversation in the mirror world, in Zorbi, in New York, for example, uh, or anywhere else. And we, uh, we not only see this as a game, but we also really see this as a social destination because um, the users, uh, the, the players will also have the opportunity to build uh, their own permanent virtual residence in any city in the world that they choose. So. We see this as both a game, but also as a sort of Facebook, but for the AR VR generation. Um, so we think that the potential here is huge. And of course, inspired by uh, the, 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 the prominent Kyoto company, Nintendo, and, and the many fantasy worlds that it built, uh, and inspired me so much to, to try to move into this space. Um, so we, we, we marketed, uh, targeted Kyoto because um, my business partners and I, because of its strengths that Joseph partly mentioned, um, it has a very strong academic foundation for virtual reality uh, research and augmented reality research. It has a lot of relevant talent in the area um, because many people come uh, to that area to perhaps work with Nintendo or work with other gaming companies. And it, there's just a, a real pool of resources. People not just, as, as you may know, video games, uh, especially ones using these new technologies are an extremely multidisciplinary uh, endeavor. So you, you not only need to have people with strengths in programming, uh, but of course in design and in um, art, and in uh, you know the various hardware technologies, in sound design, uh, in business, of course, and we think that Kyoto is just a, a really great confluence of all these different um, talents. So um, while I work in the startup visa with my business partners in the first year, uh, we hope to uh, begin to. Uh, you know, after obtaining the uh, relevant funding, uh, staff up with uh, local talent in Kyoto. So my experience with the startup visa application process has been extremely uh, helpful and um, very uh, straightforward, uh, thanks to the staff at Jetro. Um, it started, as Joseph mentioned, by uh, filling out an uh, application with my business plan. Um, which uh, was extremely well adapted to a normal business plan. So uh, that, that's to say it, it wasn't, you know, if, if, you're, if you're seriously uh, considering creating a startup, um, you of course have to have a business plan. Um, and the business plan that uh, Jetro uh, requires is, is uh, very straightforward. I, I would say there was nothing out of the ordinary about it. So it was, it was quite quick for, uh, for me to fill out and my, and my business partners. Um, 
And, uh, and then after we filled out the application, uh, Jetro also connected me with uh, a, an industry expert who is very knowledgeable about this field and about the Kyoto landscape. And uh, we had an interview with her um, and uh, that went well as well. Uh, Jetro also connected me to many other uh, helpful professional advisors like a, a tax and, and legal expert and uh, an immigration expert. And these people helped me figure out in my current situation that indeed the start of visa would be program would be the most suitable for me um, even though we're perhaps a, a little bit more of a mature startup idea, um, it, be, because of the relocation efforts, uh, the advisors that Jetro connected me to uh, thought that also the startup visa program would be best. And even they connected me to a real estate agent so that I could find uh, housing in, uh, in Kyoto as I don't currently live there. So I, it wasn't a surprise that Jetro was so helpful because uh, I've worked with Jetro in the past and I know how helpful of an organization they are. Uh, as I said, I used to um, acquire and distribute movies uh, in international markets and Jetro has helped me in, in that capacity as well. And I've, I've always been really impressed with the work that Jetro has done to uh, connect uh, foreign um, business people to the local markets in, in, a, in an easy and accessible way because um, you, uh, as you may already know, if you're on this call, uh, Japan has a very uh, uh, unique way of approaching uh, businesses. So, so I really uh, am very indebted to Jetro and appreciate their 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 help in in helping me make Zorbi into a reality, which I think it will be uh, its strongest possible iteration in in Japan, in Kyoto especially. Um, so I'll, I'll pause there and see if there are any questions perhaps from, from Joseph, uh, and of course, happy to take questions at the end. Great, thank you. So yeah, definitely I'd like to hear more detailed story uh, later. So next, uh, only some could you share about your company, your business? Yes. That's going in Japan. Okay, let me share my screen first. And I think you can turn on the videos, your video. Uh, I can, I'm trying to turn it on there. I believe there is a little problem right now. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yeah please share. Okay, maybe I start with uh, my introduction first and uh, see if my video turns on. <laughs> okay. okay, hi everybody. Uh, as a, uh, Earlier, I have introduced myself as the CEO of uh, this uh, new startup company called Coet Kyoto. Uh, basically, my background is uh, in the architectural and uh, property development industry in Singapore. And um, my company has uh, been operating for more than 15 years in Singapore. So, Basically, why we actually do a startup in Kyoto is actually to find uh, new market opportunities for raw materials, construction materials uh, for our current running projects in Singapore and other parts of Asia. So as you can see the slide that I show here, based, uh, what we do as COET is uh, whatever needs that is needed in the projects in Singapore is being copied is being conveyed to facilitators in our company where we will help to source the appropriate materials, technology, work with the right craftsmen to develop the product uh, for the Singapore uh, clientele. So that is the nature of uh, our business. And why I choose Kyoto is for a very simple reason is that it's a super vibrant Hub is a very super vibrant city for a lot of artisans together and a lot of uh, new technology company, you know, to showcase their works. And um, it's a small city, but it really has a lot of ideas uh, to share and heaps of events and a calendar of activities for people like us, you know, to explore and source for 
uh, new ways, new alternative ways of you know providing new services and products to our clients. So, uh, and then that's why I actually approached Jetro and uh, in helping me like uh, what Farid has uh, done, helping me to set up the company, getting the visa done, um, really trying to help me to weaver through the really technical, you know, uh, aspects of uh, the incorporation of the company. So we incorporated last year, I think uh, uh, we just incorporated last month, but uh, Jetro gave us the startup uh, visa last year, um, October. And from then our company has uh, quickly collaborated with a few uh, companies in Kyoto and delivered projects and delivered the products to uh, Singapore and Asia market already. So uh, that's a short brief of what my company do. Okay, let me start. So now I will give it back to uh, Joseph. Okay, yes, thank you for sharing about your business. Thank and, you. Yeah. So Wonsan, could you share about your business? I'll try what you're doing in Kyoto. Okay. Uh, this is the... Yes, I have earlier introduced. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, I asked in Wonsan. Oh, Won. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm going to share my screen. Can you, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now I yeah start my presentation. So my name is Yuan and I'm the COO from Farmfo. I'm a still a graduate student of this Mekong University and I'm going to graduate uh, in two days. And I have been studying in Japan for eight years, like a uh, Japanese language school for two years and university for two years, graduate university for two years. And the last year, me and my friends established our company, Fanfo. In one word, Fanfo is an application that supports restaurant conversion. So how Fanfo do it? Specifically, we provide restaurant value through the usage of data. For example, the data of menu, the number of customer and so on. Restaurant could achieve two things, mobile order and the user connection by putting data into Form 4. These two things will bring restaurant sales growth, cost reduction, flexible reaction, and uh, et cetera. First, I'm going to introduce Form 4 mobile order. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the term mobile order. Basically, you can make your order with your phone in Fanfo case, you can access the restaurant menu by scanning the QR code on the table, then make your choice and send the order information to kitchen. Chef will check that from kitchen display and start cooking. We just knew how it works, but is this really help restaurant? The answer is yes. Based on the research done by Alibaba Group, and the user feedback of Form 4. We find out there are 20% raise on per customer consumption, 40% down on staff cost, and 50% down on and the customers. When restaurants managers realize the advantage of using Form 4, they can try it right away. That's a small animation to introduce that. This is Form 4. And this is a QR code you can download from Form 4 application. Please image this is a coffee shop. What manage need to do is put iPad in the kitchen and the QR code on the table. That's all. You just finished it very quickly. 
and the simple is one of the biggest reasons that restaurant managers want to use phone for. Another one is price. Restaurant can use the order system for free. Usually when we told people this order system is free, they are always curious about how we make money. Before I introduce the flow of money, I want to introduce the flow of data first. As I mentioned, Formful provides restaurants value through the usage of data. So let's talk about the second part, user connection. We offer Formful application to restaurant. When more and more customers get used to Formful, we're going to offer customer app Actually, it is scheduled to be launched in this April. After that, our restaurants users and customer users are likely to have more connections. For example, connections on advertisement, a payment, and the membership, and so on. We offer mobile order system, offline payment, and restaurant app for free. As the number of user increases, we make profit from online payment, platform fees, optional services. Also, we provide customized services for chain stores. Next, I'm going to introduce the reason why we are doing this business. Maybe some of you have seen or have used these services. All of this is uh, done by big companies. Chain stores realized the profits that mobile order brought and they made their own ones. However, personal shops are not able to develop their own apps. What Formful wants to do is bring the system that big companies already have built to all restaurants. This graph introduced the uh, development process of the mobile order market in America, China, and Japan. As you can see, no matter in America or China, mobile order grows fast in recent years. And we expect the market share of mobile order will reach to 10 to 15% in Japan by 2025. And the market size should around 1.8 trillion yen. So what Formful have done so far? We have restaurant partners from Hokkaido to Okinawa in total, more than 50 restaurants are using Form 4. And that's the introduction of Form 4. And uh, thank you for listening. And I will finish the, the screen share. Okay. Thank you, Wang Fang, for by your story. So thank you. from now, uh, actually, end of this session, uh, we have a Q&A corner, uh, but uh, uh, I'd like to just ask the main question before that, uh, each of you. So uh, just I'd like to know, uh, why did you choose Kyoto as a place for your business? So could you share that kind of story uh, from Wangsan? Okay, uh, sure. And first, as I mentioned, I'm a student from Ismaikan University, and uh, all the co-founder of Fanfo come from Ismaikan University, which is the University of Kyoto. Uh, I mean, all of us like Kyoto, uh, also the lifestyle in Kyoto. Second, from the data of our restaurant partners, we found that the restaurant located in Kyoto are more active and they showed a lot of interest in Fanfo. Also, as you know, Kyoto is a city of tourism and the Form 4 app is friendly uh, to foreign tourists. We can, uh, the tourists, they can check the menu in three different languages. Overall, we believe if, we, if Form, 4 could have, Form 4 could have a good start if, we, uh, if our com company based on Kyoto. And that's all. Thank you. And also, uh, I'd like to know about only some, like, uh, I, I think you already shared something, but uh, if you could share again, like, uh, uh, mm -hmm. yes, um, Kyoto, in uh, my opinion, is uh, I think the, the 
besides Tokyo, is the best cent uh, best city in the whole of Japan for all the artisans to care uh, to to come together on one platform. And uh, because the infrastructure here for exhibitions, for uh, showcasing talents is very established. So whoever comes into Kyoto and wants to explore all kinds of uh, related to the um, uh, craft industry, right, they have easy access from Kyoto. You don't need to travel to other prefecture because uh, yes. That is the main reason why I chose Kyoto. Yeah. Thank you. So how about Farido? Sure. Uh, the short answer in one word, Nintendo. Um, but uh, the longer answer is what I described earlier because Nintendo is not just, uh, <clears throat> you know, a potential collaborator, collaborator but it's a, it's a, it's a magnet. Uh, for, for talent, I think, not just across Japan, uh, really across the world, uh, for anyone that wants to um, build other sort of fantasy environments that draw people in and have the, the relevant skills to do it. Um, so we think we'll have a much better time. Um, uh, candidly, you know, the, and it's the reason why I'm relocating from Geneva, Switzerland to Kyoto. Um, candidly than here um, uh, because you have the people interested in the very like multidisciplinary efforts that it takes to make um, a video game, especially one that uses the latest technologies like AR and VR. Mm. Oh. Yeah, we are looking forward like you can enter Japan soon after finishing. Yes, thanks. I hope this state of emergency ends so that uh, we can uh, we, I can I can move. <laughs> right. Yes, but this is amazing. Like each of you is a, a you know, the country is different, but uh, uh, Kyoto has attracted uh, unique, uh, attractive environment. So uh, next question I have is uh, what are the you know difficulties you face while you start your business in Kyoto? and how useful support by Startup Capital Kyoto program is. So maybe I'm gonna go same one sound and I probably just in, in your case, maybe you can share, uh, right, the how useful support by Startup Capital Kyoto program is. Yes. I mean, yeah, Kyoto helped us a lot and uh, especially for foreigner people, I think the biggest difficulty is related to the law, including is establish a company, you have a lot of procedure to do and uh, another one is apply for the visa. Mm -hmm. So Jetol helped us a lot on those uh, aspects. Another one is contact. It is necessary to get local contact to start and to expand your company. We are grateful for the introduction from Jetol and the Kyoto government. Mm -hmm. People say, uh, go in in Japanese, which means destiny that tie people together. We hope, we hope to, we really hope to keep this context, and we believe that it's very important for Funko to go further to, uh, to grow bigger. Thank you. Mm. Yes, I remember we introduced you the lawyer who specialized the patent because your business is QR, use a QR. So the patent is uh, kind of complicated, right? Yeah, it is difficult. And uh, I mean, it's for foreign people, it's totally uh, mm. different country and uh, they have different laws. You have to know that it's kind yeah. of important. Right. And also just last Monday, uh, I introduced immigration specialists, right? Uh. You. you graduate university soon, right? Yes, uh, we, we were graduating two days. Actually, it's uh, Saturday. Yeah, we have a ceremony. Just within two days. Right. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. Great. So, yeah, we have various support system. So, how about only Sam? Do you have any, can you share any story? Uh, yeah, I, I moved to Kyoto two years ago. Uh, I, I tried six months trying to set up a company by myself. And um, 
going to the Bureau, uh, the Bureau uh, of uh, Business, it was really, um, it's not an easy task for foreigners, seriously, not easy at all. You know, translating every document there is into from Japanese to English, understanding it is, um, is something, if I can skip, I will skip. Yeah. So that's why Jetro came in very handy, which makes a whole, uh, whole setup simply, yeah, simplify everything for me. Mm -hmm. So that's one, that's one thing I'm very grateful to. And also mm -hmm. the other obstacle that mm -hmm. we, we, I'm still facing right now is I, Joseph, which I told you before is the tax, the tax mm -hmm. system in Japan. So mm -hmm. corporate tax system. So uh, that is one thing that I'm grateful that you are introducing me <laughs> next week. <laughs> to meet up with the tax consultant. Yeah. Mm. And uh, like what uh, uh, Yen has mentioned, context mm. is very important in Kyoto. You, um, as a foreigner, you tend to just stick to your, some, uh, like your foreign community, you know, because of the language barrier. But in, in order to, for you to get the real context with the local, you really have to, step out of your comfort zone, break the barrier, learn the language, and mm. speak with the locals and try to build a relationship. Even though, like me, my Japanese is really not there, but I still have to write business letter in Japanese, and I hope the receiver understand what I'm writing. So these kind of things we have to try in order to make it work in Kyoto, because Kyoto community is very close knit very yeah right so yeah then of course we can introduce you the tax accountant as well uh, yes i'm waiting yes so, <laughs> next yeah. week right yeah right yeah. Uh, yeah then also how about communication wise like uh, your business is a uh, uh, really important uh, supplier to find a supplier so oh yes so, extremely uh, important uh, when it comes to uh, communication <laughs> Uh, especially when uh, I get projects from uh, overseas and where there's technical spec and design specs to be translated and communicated to the local companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. it's a huge, I, I'm still learning every day, picking mm -hmm. up yeah, mm -hmm. how to translate the uh, requirements from overseas into the local context. But so far, uh, I've been getting help. Uh, translators are very important. Yeah, getting help. And uh, successfully, I have uh, delivered some projects now. So yeah, it's an ongoing process. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yes. Thank you for sharing. And how about Farida-san? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> I was initially uh, thinking about applying for a business management visa, um, but uh, Jetro really helped un, um, help me understand the requirements for that and, uh, you know, made me realize that, frankly, it would be irresponsible, I think, as a, as a startup to make a company in Kyoto before going through the necessary preparatory activities we'd have to go through there anyway. So that's what directed me into the startup visa program instead. Um, and uh, and led me and led me down that path. So it's it's really thanks to that program that um, we can explore, um, you know, uh, incorporating it in in Kyoto and uh, over the course of, of the year and after we evaluate the local landscape uh, up front. So uh, so that's the that's the way that they really that Jetro really helped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Oh yes, I remember. Uh, one time, uh, Fan Fa Chin uh, submitted the uh, document, like application form, uh, of Japanese. But uh, Farido San, Longbin San, uh, all two of you is English. So uh, just I'd like to find like uh, we are totally no problem English application. So also we take support. So next question I have is that. Uh, uh, just I'd like to know what is the biggest challenge for you right now? So, 
this question, uh, could you share like from a party thing? Sure. Uh, so the biggest challenge for me right now is is getting into the country. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, you know, I, I plan on moving in about three weeks uh, if all goes according to uh, to schedule. But uh, of course, there's you know this uh, this pandemic happening, which uh, no one can control. So, but l luckily, it seems like it's heading in the right direction. I think I saw in the news yesterday or even today that uh, Japan will end the state of emergency perhaps uh, next week. So. Uh, that, that, that's the biggest challenge. And of course, the other related to the business, um, we, uh, my, my business partners and I have invested about um, 250,000 Swiss francs into this business so far, but we're still looking to raise externally about 300,000 more. So uh, it's raising the seed round that we're, we're looking into. And, and Jetro has already helped uh, introduce us in, to some um, Japanese venture capital funds um, uh, in the Kyoto area, so and, and we'll introduce uh, more. Um, so really looking forward to that support. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I hope uh, you can get connection with Nintendo as well. Thank you. <laughs> me too. <laughs> you need it. <laughs> okay. So how about only san Yeah. The the, uh, the major challenge right now is because uh, my product de development has already started. So uh, the issue I always face now is um, exporting from Japan, logistics. Uh, there is one of the biggest challenge where, uh, where my items are uh, quite uh, big in sizes. So uh, in terms of delivering to our clientele, you know, I'm still looking for a logistical uh, logistics partner that can really help to save costs in terms of making, you know, Japanese product more price competitive because um, uh, Japan has a lot of valuable uh, assets to show to the rest of the world, but um, it has to somehow become be more price competitive with uh, products from uh, more, uh, other countries like Europe and Southeast Asia. So one, one area is logistics that can really help overseas market mm -hmm. more in the, yeah, value Japanese products and import more in mm -hmm. to their countries. Yeah, so this is the biggest challenge I have right now. I can develop all kinds of products, but in the end is helping mm -hmm. my clients to save costs. And that's, I hope where Jetro can help mm -hmm. me to <laughs> sure. develop a relationship. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. I definitely will you Jack to support there as well. So just yes, to keep thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest challenge here. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. And how about Wonsan? Do you have any like what is your biggest challenge for you right now? Uh yes. Um uh, we have run our app for more than one year and run our company uh, almost uh, half a year. And uh, next step is very clear to us. We need to increase our market share and mm -hmm. we need to start gaining profit. Yeah, I mean... I mean, actually just, I'd like to share why you should focus the, that you should increase the market. Like, because uh, you got to succeed to get an investment, right? From you yes. money from the investors. Yes, we uh, are kind of getting uh, investment about like 30 million yen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, it support us to work further, but yeah, uh, 30 you, million yen is huge. Yeah, yeah. From so, one angel, right? Yeah, from one angel. Mm -hmm. And they, I mean, they, I think it's just a, a big development in the next five years or three years. That was a, yeah, I mean, the mobile, the mobile world is kind of a, a popular, no matter in which country. So Japan will also be the next big market, we believe that. So yeah, and the investor have the same opinion. And yeah, 
So he invested us and we are very thankful for that. And of course, the investment is very critical to support us to the next step. But yeah, the most important thing is we need to make our make money by ourselves. By ourselves, yeah, it's uh, it's hard to to go to the next step, which is uh, the next investment. But we will fight for it. Mm-hmm. Great, right? This is uh, yes, really interesting story. Thank you for sharing. And um, this is all that uh, which I prepared the question. So from now on, uh, I'd like to uh, get the question from the audience. So if anyone has a question, uh, please ask to the speakers. Uh, just raise a hand or just speak out. I think it would be okay, fine. Yes. Feel free to share any que- comments or any questions. And uh, only some, you have a comment from Carl. Yes. Regarding a shipping company. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, Carl Essen. Oh, thanks. Nice and um, she said she had shipping problems, but um, I, I can help her. Um, and talk knows me, and um, I've been helping people all across the Venture Cafe um, in shipping from wherever they want to go to wherever. And um, it's it's pretty easy. But uh, okay, that's good. But you I got know. my you got my email in the uh, and phone number in the uh, contact. Okay. Uh, and I'll be happy to help you out. And um, um, what what I see today is. Tokyo to you is like Chicago, Illinois to St. Louis, Missouri. And um, um, and what the excitement is with being in your location is the history part as well as it's a little bit isolated. So you, you, you can get down to business versus dealing with the influence from other foreign people, you know, humming around you. And so you, you, you get, you know, roll your shirt sleeves up and get things done in your town over in Tokyo, you get distracted by all the other things going on. And that's the power of your city mm. as I see it. Yeah. Thank and, you. And th- think of it that way. And, um, um, mm. I, I, I think, uh, what I like about Japan is that you speak American English over English, English, and that's the business language and everything like that. And, um, in St. Louis, though, I do see more of Korea marketing people to come to Korea, like what you guys talked about, versus Japan. And um, and it seems in the Asian um, societies, you know, that uh, that they stay hovered with the Chinese and Japanese stay together, but the Koreans always reaching out and everything. And I I lived with uh, Asian in college, and so I have experience. But you know. That, that was like 50 years ago. So I, I have that experience I can bring to the table. And TAK can, uh, you know, relay that of my support towards what you guys are trying to do. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Okay. But, so contact me if. Yeah. Is uh, where is. Okay. I will ask Joseph some. How do I get your contact? Sure. Uh, so, just yeah. I'm gonna copy and paste, and I will send it. Yes. Yes. Thank right you. Right in the chat, right there. Yes, it's in the chat. Zoom chat. Ah, it's in the chat. Okay. Right. You know. Also, uh, I have uh, some question. Uh, sub- from Sabrina. Some. Uh, thank you for your question. So, how could COVID vaccine roll out impact the number of foreign startups allowed to move to Japan? I see. Maybe. Uh, Situation is uh, really different each countries. Uh, Faridusen, could you share about your case? Um, yeah, I think it would be uh, very helpful. Uh, I don't know though. Uh, each government makes its own decisions on uh, whether or not vaccination allows 
more immigration. Um, but yeah, would, I think it would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. So we, we can see from now on, like uh, we are still not sure yet, I guess. So how about next question? Are there any tax breaks or other incentives being offered to startups now or planned in the near future? I see. Uh, <clears throat> actually, it depends on yourselves. Uh, like we should have offered the to startups like uh, in the near future, I guess. Well, thank you for your question, Greg. So, okay, so any other question? If not, think, I think time is finished. Okay, talk some. Yeah, if there are no other questions, um, Again, we have a uh, networking space for every one of you to come join if you still, if time allows. Um, I will uh, share the link with you right now. Uh, if you are going to be coming by, we do recommend you join via a desktop or laptop if possible uh, using Google Chrome or Safari. Uh, I think Firefox might work as well. Uh, that is the link. It's a Remo link if any of you have used Remo before. We have a international uh, entrepreneurs community meeting up currently right now, right in the back end of this as well. So there will be some entrepreneurs already uh, who are already uh, part of the platform. Uh, so please feel free to use this um, platform to come network with other people within this session and also within the uh, remote platform and the rest of the Kyoto Innovation community. And finally speaking, we also have a slack for everyone who is would be interested in communicating more so if you can't make it to the um, remo platform because of time or anything else feel free to join us via the slack community here as well as we as we build an international community um, that can help each other out as we heard of here during the session um, so hopefully that will be helpful um, again uh, we still have, we are over time for the session, but we have time for questions. If there's any other last minute questions, feel free to ask them. If not, we will meet you in the networking lounge. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you to all of the speakers. It was great to hear your stories. Uh, we look forward to helping you out. If there's any questions, feel free to reach out to us at Venture Cafe. Obviously, Jetro is here to help as well. Uh, it was great to hear from you. And I look forward to meeting you guys in the networking space as well. So. Have a great Thanks. day for wherever you're logging in from or night. Um, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will stay here till the very end if any of you need help uh, logging in or logging out or anything. A question. Yes. Who am I talking? Carl. Carl. Yes, sir. How are you? Why, why don't they open Venture Cafe in that town? In Kyoto? Yeah. Well, right now we have our program in Tokyo. We are the only one in uh, Asia. So, uh, and I'm technically not part of the expansion team, so I don't know our complete strategy, but I well, think that uh, it would uh, be wise for us to build out in other is, countries before we build out in Japan. Well, no, I, I'm just saying uh, Tyler had, uh, had Venture Cafe at 39 North, and so maybe have on Tuesdays and maybe have like a little get together like that to encourage people in the, in the college community to get active with um oh oh yeah. In, yeah in 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 the essence of uh expanding our community we're actually streaming live from kyoto so we're physically in kyoto today uh streaming so oh, that's what, that's what with that said yes we are we are there right now technically okay. so, so yeah it, it it is uh us putting on a show in kyoto like physically uh we're right. just our hub is still Venture Cafe Tokyo, so we're in Tokyo. Yeah, because like, like for that uh, rocket pitch, I brought in uh, people from Washington University in St. Louis to be mm -hmm. part of that. And so they experiencing Japan that they never experienced Japan before. And so mm -hmm. that's, where I, that's what I've been doing. And, um, Absolutely.
So, so you know, it, with that said, yes, we are we are technically expanding our roots to different cities, but not necessarily building a whole new venture cafe over there quite yet. Okay. Yeah. How far away is that from your town? Um, probably about an hour and a half or two hours by bullet train. So it's yeah. still a little bit far, but definitely doable within a day trip. Well, it's comfortable on your trains. Yeah. So yeah, that's true. And com they're pretty compared fast to our too. Amtrak. Yeah. <laughs> our, our Amtraks don't work well. <laughs> what, what time is it over there, Carl, in St. Louis? Uh, well, I, I only got two times of life anymore. Nighttime and daytime. 4.34. Okay. 4.34 in the morning. Well, I always appreciate you coming back so early in the morning. I, I, please... I, I, I enjoy being with you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate you. But please get yeah. some sleep and make sure that you stay safe too. Okay. Take care. Bye. Thank you very much. Take care. And don't free, feel free to drop in our networking space too. Yeah. But I, I don't have laptops, so I, I won't be there. Thank you. Mm. Makes so, sense. I'll let you go. No worries. No worries. No worries. Everyone else, um, if there's any questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, I will be here till the last person leaves uh, just to make sure everything is taken care of. Minasan, eh, honjis no session wa shuryo itashimashita ga nanka go shisumon nado areba ko chara de tayo sasete itadakimasu. Daijoubu de shou ka? Anyone have any last minute questions? Oh. Hi, Teo Agate Rashaimas. Mute or has a state of the Kiriba, Cosmon Tayo Sasita Gimas. Kaga de Shoka. あ、大丈夫です。ごめん。あ、大丈夫です。はい、はい。大丈夫です。僕ね、もう7時8歳のじいさんなんですけど。いや、全然大丈夫ですよ。100歳人生のためにね、勉強させてもらってます。あ、良
、そういう部分の、うん、そこの部分に神社仏閣があるわけですよ。はい、で多分、えー、っと皆さんのお考えでブランド化して例えば京セラさんとかいうテクノロジーの近代的な工業生産のものは小麦さんって僕はあると思うんですよ。うん、それがブランド化に京都っていうブランド化にするのか。うんうんうん、いわゆるその伝統600年700年貴族社会があって武家社会があってそこに技術者ってのはいたわけですよ、はいはい、その職人を含めてだから京都のお祭りって多分ご存知だと思うんですけど補助金一切受けないはずですよねおおなるほど京都の住民の持ってる予算の中でしかやらないはずなんですよほうほうほうほうそういう文化を守ってきたんですよなるほどそういう意味でおっしゃってる部分の皆さんがおっしゃってる部分の京都がブランドになると、うん、その意味はすごくよく理解できます、うんうんうん、ただし50年後100年後に何がブランドになるんですかということになれば、うん、僕は五重の塔の地を何にしろ、まあ、僕の言葉で言えばブルーカラーですか、うんうんうん、大工さんだとか、うん、職人さんたちが学校に学問を受けられなかったとその人たちが僕が作ってきた京都だと思ってるんですよ、片っぽで、うん。その部分を例えば皆さんがそのイノベーションしても、うん、その職人の学校を京都に作ってやろうじゃないかと。うん、それで今度はいわゆるマーケティングとしてマッチングしながら、うん、あのお弁当屋さんもそうだと思うんですが、彼、多分向こうのフランスならフランスの人に合うような。形なりなんかにしてるはずですよ。日本のオリジナルの独特の民芸品になっちゃいますから。なるほど。そこのマッチングですね、商品化するための。なるほどですね。で、どちらかというと、いわゆる京セラさんなり、ワコールさんなり、うん、そういうマスマーケッターのインターナショナルの部分わかるんですけど、うん、それでは僕は京都はブランドにならないと思ってます。うんうん老いたちから言ってね、僕個人的な意見ですがね。もちろん、もちろん。いや、かなり近いとこは思っています。それは何かというと、はいはい。そういう意味で、例えばマーケットを作って、インターナショナルの学校を作っても、うん、多分京都じゃなくて、奈良も含めて、うん、僕は同州生徒派の方なんですよ、うん。で、職人にしたって、東北にもいるし、北海道にもいるし。どこどこにいるわけですよ。もちろん。京都の職人さんって京都生まれじゃないですから。もちろん。そういう意味で、その皆さんのお考えの京都のブランドを育てる部分と、じゃあどうしたらいいかということと、うん、それからインターナショナルなマーケティングするにはどうしたらいいかと。なるほど。っていうのをちょっと僕は感じたもんで。その話、ぜひ、あの、ね、あのいろんな方とあのネットワーキング会場で広げていただければと思いますし自分からのレスポンスですといやおっしゃる通りだなっていうところももちろんあってそれがどういう意味かやっぱ今デジタルでテクノロジーでいろんなとこは回ってると思うんですけど、はい、最終的にはプレミア感はその人間っていうところに出てくると思うので、はい、それがのであったりあの技術の手で作る技術であったりとかもかなりまあこの数十年後にはプレミア感出てるのかなとすごく思ってまして、なんで,で、そこはあるかなとすごく思ってます、ね。だからに日本のブランドっていうのは鎖国してたからじゃないですか、島国、はいはい。その中でその技術的なものとか、か長崎だとか、港、ね、ああいうところの教会があったりとか、はい、その辺を皆さんが僕、まあ、僕も78ですので。はいはい、自分の経験の中でいわゆる日本の経済の導入期から成長期、はい、衰退期全部マーケティングお手伝いしてきまして、はいはい、で僕担当はあのマッケンジソンの時はロックフェラーやったもんですからなるほどそれから、ま、ロ,ックあのロッキードもお手伝いしてましたしへほとんどのテクノロジーって軍事から来てるわけですよ。はいはい、そうですよねだからデジタル化っていうのはよく分かるんですけど、うん、そのデジタル化ってどこから出るんですかって軍事から出てきてるから、うんうんうん、僕は中国とアメリカとの今度はアルファベットの言葉だってじゃあね
、なんで英語だったんですかというように、うん、僕は中国とアメリカでデジタル化っていうのは方法変わるんじゃないかと思ってるタイプなんですよ。なるほど。で京都っていうのはね、で僕が京都っていうのは僕も大好きですし、僕日本大好きですから、うん、地方創生をお手伝いしてて、はいはい、日本は十分いけるとそれはいわゆる,いわゆる職人さんですね、はい、職人さんがなぜダメになったかというと名誉と賃金が安いからですようんそういう新しい組合を日本は作るべきだと僕は思ってるわけですなるほどそうすれば世界の中の一つの差別化その職人の技術の持ってたものがテクノロジーになっていくといわゆる日本のいわゆる金型作りって全部手の感覚だったわけですよね、はい、車でもそれは日本的なそのいわゆる手のテクノロジーで来たわけですよはいはい感覚というそれがなくなったら多分僕アメリカなりどっかに多分負けるでしょうね負けるというのはデジタルっていうだけでやったらあなるほどですねいわゆる感性っていう部分の日本独特の感性ですかそれ伝統文化のそれはもうあの五重の塔とかその木の葉ででもその日本人ってどこの木がどういうふうになるかそれはもうあの伊勢神宮でも何でも柱立てるために何本も使える木は1本しか立てないのに100年かけて作ってるわけですよ、はい、そんな国ないですよまあそうですね、けどおっしゃってるのは負けるというのは今勝ってるんですか反対に。いえ、あの、いわゆる可能性があるという。ソフトのね。あなるほど。そうじゃなければ世界1位、2位のあれにならなかったでしょと。いわゆる経済国としてね。一応経済的には、まあアメリカの影響は一応多いですけど、僕らアメリカの真似してればよかったんですから、広告代理店で。だから独特のことをやられてるのはトヨタさんなり小松さんなり、はい、山田さんなりやっぱり日本的ないわゆる計画やってますよね。はいはい、でそれがもういわゆるマスマーケットという話の一つの産業としての考え方考え方で分かると。なるほど京,都は京都っていうのを考えた時には僕は京都が伝統的に持ってきたソフトソフトがどこから生まれたかっていうと。人がつ作ってきたんだと、はいはい、しかも人が優秀な人じゃねえんだと言葉悪いですけど、はいはい、親方がいて投了制度があってそこで10年なら10年かかって、うん、20年かかってやっと一人前になるわけじゃないですか、はいはい、それってすごい今非近代的ですよねまあそうですねだから職人いなくなっちゃうんですよね、うん、名誉と給料安いですからまあそうですね、なんかそういうことを一つのテーマにしてもう一本のテーマですよ。うん、いやそういう話をねちょうど今あのもう一つのセッションでやってるんですよ。で、えー、あの裏の方で、えーとはいはい、B かなあの。通訳も入ってるんでもしよかったらそちらの方でも。結構面白い話盛り上がってるんで、お聞きになりますかあ,あまり簡単に話じゃないからいいです。またえそうですか次の機会って、ねまあ、あなたに聞いていただいたけど、僕、なぜかというと、はいはい、100歳人生のために少し頑張ろうと思って、若い人がみんな僕のところにやってくるんですけど、はいはい、今の現代っていうのが僕が分かってないですから、現場知らないですから、はいはい、過去は分かってるわけです。もちろん。で広告代理店行ってバンケマスマーケットに行ったらどういうことか産業革命以降なぜどうなったか、はいはい、で次の日本でどうだろうかとはいすとい,いわゆる中国とアメリカとの問題が一番大きくなってくると思うんですよはいはい経済的な部分ですね軍事を含めて、はいはい、そうすると日本って何なのと日本のオリジナリティ日本をジスイズジャパンというブランドをどうやって作っていくかとそれと同じで京都も僕はそういうふうに考えてるもんで、うん、そのうま,いうまいバランスですよね産業ですからはいはいで京都をなぜ皆さんがブランドにして京都に何で興味あるかっていうのが
、あのよっしゃってることは意味わかります、はいはい。ただ知ってらっしゃるのかなっていうことね、うん、背景をね、800年なら800年の歴史の、まあ、かなりそれより深いと思いますが。ええ、だから染めの吉岡なんかもこの前亡くなっちゃいましたけど、うん、あの色を染めるための,あのいわゆるお祭りだとか行事の全部ありますね、神社の骨格の。はいあの染めの紙吹垣一個でももう建て作る人がいないんですよ、柿を、はいはい、商売になんねんか。それを作るのもちゃんと守ってたんですよ、吉岡。やっぱりそういう部分ね、経済にならないけど、そういうようなところまで分かられてやったら。もっと奥の深くてそれからインターナショナルの北欧を含めた僕はマッチング僕井出さんとあの地方創生の時井出さんと日本の大工とマッチングした、はいはい、あの鳥取県に話したことあるんですよ。はいはい、それあの皆さん理解できなかったですけどその目的は何かというと、うん、日本の大工さんの技術この精度の高さね、うん、これをインターナショナルな部分。片っぽは工業化する分あると、うん、日本の持ってる技術これをもう少しマッチングしたらもっと素晴らしいことできるしそれから東洋医学といわゆる健康っていうテーマありますね。はい、であの鳥取県にあの一郎のトレーナーがいるんですけどで僕は東洋医学と西洋医学をミックスしたトレーナーの学校を作ろうと思ったんですよ。なるほどで結局、えーと、西洋文化っていうのは全部バックグラウンドのあれ、ねそのえー、と医師法のあれがないとだめなわけですよ。東洋医学ってないんですよね。うん、でほとんどえ僕らは日本人ですから NHK のラジオ体操がどこから生まれたのとほとんどのあれはアメリカでもヨーロッパでも軍隊の体操から来てるんですよね。うんでヨガとか憲法とかなんとかっていろいろありますよね。うん。あれ守りのあれですから攻めの武器じゃないかな。もちろん。合気道みたいな感じですよね。で,ねで,で、それをミックスしたね、学校作りたいなと思ったら、行政行ったら学校になっちゃうと文科省なんですよ。うん。それでリハビリテーションとかなんかって言っちゃうと、厚生省になっちゃうんですよ。うんうん、それでインターナショナルにやると、通算、経済通算省。そうやってぶつかっちゃってできなかったんですけど。はいはい。だからそういう意味で何を言いたいかと,いうと、やっぱり世界ができないこと、日本ができること、うん、まあ中国ですから相手が、うん、東洋医学と西洋医学。それで漢方薬をの農園を作ろうと思ったんですよ。はいはい。いわゆる貧しい発展途上国の国ありますね。ドラッグじゃなくてね、そういう農園を作るノウハウを、韓国でも結構あるんですよね、農薬で。それを日本がプロデュースしてあげて、北欧も含めて。欧米がでできないところですねはいはいそういうプロデュースが面白いんじゃないかなと今と思ってたらいいじゃないですかまあちょっと頑張ってみますけどぜひぜひ頑張ってくださいそれ勝手なこと言ってすいませんお時間いただいちゃっていえいえなのでぜひネットワーキング会場に参加していただければ、はい、かなり面白い方たちがいるので、うん、こちらのリモの方にあの例えばあの iPod のクリックユー作った方たちとか結構いろんな人がいるんでぜひ参加くださいまたチャンスあったら行きますよはいはいぜひお願いいたしますはい勝手なこと申し上げてあの京都の件に関してはやっぱり何が京都のブランドを育ってきたかってことは一番大事だと思います僕はなのでそ,っちそちらのぜひ意見をネットワーキング会場でシェアしていただければと思います反対にはいわかりましたお願いしますちょっとありがとうございましたはい皆さん他にあのこちらの方でなんかお話聞いてるようですが大丈夫ですかそろそろこちらの部屋閉めますが大丈夫ですか、ね、はいどうぞあ
ね。